So I spent eight years in university and at least half of those years were spent doing all nighters, getting no sleep, trying to balance my social life with my work life and my life was mostly a mess. In the latter years of my university, I was able to actually set up a YouTube channel, set up a successful business, make friends for life and all while scoring highly in my medical school exams and getting into my first place medical specialty and hospital location. So in this video, I'll be sharing you guys the exact key principles that I applied in university that allowed me to achieve so much and hopefully helping you to create the life of your dreams in university. What is going on guys? My name is Kenji, welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And let's go ahead and jump into the first principle, which is studying with friends. Now, when I was in my first degree of biomedical science, I used to study completely alone. And the problem with that was that number one, it made studying very boring and also it was very isolating. This made studying such an unenjoyable task, but when I actually entered medical school, things changed. And the reason being is that in medical school oftentimes when you're preparing for your examinations you naturally have to study in groups we would often have to partner up and practice taking histories and performing physical examinations in pairs and in wider groups and this setup would have one person acting as a patient the other person acting as a doctor allowing us to practice all of these skills that we would need in our final exams and it finally clicked to me that after three to four years of studying completely alone this act of studying together and with my friends made time pass so quickly studying with friends not only make studying more fun but you can also time your work sessions you can be in the library and say guys we're going to sit down for 25 30 minutes and let's actually take a five minute break every 25 30 minutes together and in those breaks you can catch up have fun grab a coffee you know what i'm trying to say here if you actually get stuck in your studying sessions and you want to get some advice or some help from your friend, you can also do so. And most importantly, if you find the right friends, you can hold each other accountable. So oftentimes I'd say to my friends on the group chat, guys, let's go ahead and meet in the library at 9 a.m. Let's be there, make sure you're on time. And the person who doesn't turn up, we know the back of our heads, you know, this guy is playing games. He's being a bit sloppy here. So hold each other accountable if you have the right friends that you want to study with. Looking back at my university experience, honestly, the times we spent in the library on a Sunday evening Evening, literally at 9 p.m. were the best times we had in university. We'd study all day long, take breaks, have a laugh, and honestly, I promise you this, it was some of the best days I've ever had. Just a quick break to say, guys, that 91% of you who watch this channel are actually not subscribed to the channel. Please take two seconds out of your day to make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you never miss another upload. I really want to try and improve this figure. 91% is not the best figure in the world. Let's go ahead and get this channel to 100k subscribers. I really appreciate your time. And let's get back to the video. So the next thing I have for you guys is to try your best to spend some time focusing on some side hustles. Although university definitely is a time to make new friends, uh, make new experiences, you know, have fun, definitely, definitely do that. It wasn't actually until my sixth year of university where I actually started dabbling the art of making money online alongside my degree. And the way that I did that was one, starting this YouTube channel. I used to do a bunch of tutoring, running online courses, and ultimately leading to this business that I now have, which not only changed my university experience, but also changed my life right now as a doctor forever. When I actually started making money in university, that extra few hundred pounds a month made a huge difference. It allowed me to pay for my expensive living costs living in central London, but most importantly, it allowed me to save and invest for my future, which I'm currently living on today. See, the thing is, when you're in university, I promise you, that is a time in your life where you'll have the most amount of time that you'll ever have. When you complete university and you start a job like me right now working as a doctor, I promise you, when you have a lot more responsibility, you have a lot less time to do these things and to work on side hustles. It's much easier in university to dabble in the art of making money wherever you are in the way of a side hustle, and if you make the investment now it will save you and help you out so much in your future so i encourage you to of course have fun in university but also dabble with a few ideas on the side try and experiment different ways of making money i promise you when you actually start working and start a job any sort of extra money on the side whether it's 50 pounds 100 pounds 200 pounds you will thank yourself for that investment you made in your time in university to make money on the side of your main job it will open more doors for you later down the line but most importantly it will give you the freedom and the autonomy me. So you don't necessarily have to rely on your one main job in order to pay for your life, in order to pay for your bills. In a few months, actually, I'll be working in medicine part time. Thanks to all of these, you know, online businesses that I started, I can actually take a break from medicine, work in medicine one or two, maybe three days a week, but also spend time at home, at my desk, doing the other things that I love and having more freedom in my life. If I start a university all over again, back in year one, the first thing that I'll do straight away is to learn how to learn. See, the thing is, we don't actually get 
taught in, in university how to actually learn effectively. Don't just assume that what worked for you in high school will work for you in university. And don't just copy what your friends are doing and think that will also work for you. What I suggest is to actually take your time to learn what works for you in a specific way. Try different methods of studying. Try active recall. Try maybe using mind maps. Try writing notes. Like try loads of different ways. See if they actually work for you. Test them. Use a particular method of studying for a particular exam. See if it actually helps you and if you actually learn better. And then once you finally find a way that actually works for you and is efficient for you, then stick to that given method. The problem that I did is when I started university, I continued what I did in high school with passive learning and making notes and assuming that just because I'm making notes from my lecture slides, I'll automatically remember how to learn. It wasn't actually probably till I started medical school that I realized I'm not very much a written learner. I'm very much a visual learner. And it wasn't until I started down with other ways of learning, reading online about other ways of actually putting memory and putting information in your mind that I realized that no, I need pictures to have mind maps, I need active recall and all of these other methods of learning. And that's when I really skyrocketed in my ability to do well in exams. So don't stick to one method, try different methods and also over time throughout your degree, be open to adapting, evolving and trying out different ways of learning until you find one that works for you. And as I said, stick to that current method once it actually works for you. And on that method of learning how to learn, I want to take a quick break to tell you guys about Ken Hub, who are kindly sponsoring the video. Ken Hub is an online learning platform that I use throughout my university degree to learn my anatomy. And the reason for this is that it combines multiple effective tools in order to help you learn your human physiology and human anatomy. When I use Ken Hub to study anatomy medical school, it was honestly such an enjoyable experience, but also very effective, and mainly because of the number of interactive quizzes that they have on their platform. They have great colorful pictures, videos and detailed articles that make learning anatomy so much more enjoyable and so much easier. Where the content you need to know is nicely organized, making it so much easier to learn the given topic that you're trying to battle with. And here is an example of a study unit of the muscles in the hand and the bones of the lower limb. They have loads of different types of quizzes that are based on difficulty and all of the videos on KenHub actually contain transcripts, captions and video speed controllers so you're able to jump to different areas of the video that you want to watch. The main way that I learned anatomy is by active recall and by quizzing myself and Ken Hub actually allows you to create custom quizzes so that you can tailor the knowledge that you need to learn for yourself. I also really like how they have muscle reference cards, which are kind of like cheat sheets that contain all of the functions of the different muscles, the innovations, the insertions, the origins, which has made learning that content super easy for me. If you guys want to check out Ken Hub for yourself, then I encourage you to do so. They actually have a free version, but if you decide to actually upgrade to the full subscription, then you can actually get 10% off of that by clicking the link down below in the description. They also have a seven day money back guarantee with no questions asked. So if you actually don't like the product, there is no problem there. It's completely fine. But that's Ken Hub. Let's go ahead and get back to the rest of the video. You know, one thing that I really, really wish I did when I was in university is being more intentional with my time. Time. Honestly, much of my time was just spent going with the flow. I'd have a friend call me up at a random hour saying that he wants to go to this place and I'd drop what I'm doing immediately and I'd go and show up there in a couple of minutes. I'd have my phone ring and I'd have a manager from the Mexican restaurant that I worked in call me and say, Kenji, there is a shift that is available tomorrow night. Are you free to work it? And I'll immediately say yes. There were hundreds of different things and people trying to pull my time in different directions and I would say yes without really a second thought. Of course, it is nice and it is great to have some degree of spontaneity especially when it comes to making new friends, but I really do wish that I was more intentional with my time in terms of what I wanted to do for myself and not just for other people. How I would approach this now is that on a Sunday, I would open up my calendar and I'd look ahead of the week coming up and I'd straight away ask myself, what are the things that I really want to do and really want to prioritize for myself? What would my ideal week look like before any of the other priorities come in from anyone else? What do I want to do for myself on that given week? For example, what I'd do is I'd schedule in gym every single day from 7 to 8 p.m. I'd also look ahead at the lectures that I had and when I wanted to study and I'd add that into my calendar as well. And then I'd have a very clear idea of what I'd be doing that week and I'd use the empty spaces and the free time to then be open to the different opportunities that might come my way. Right now as a doctor, this is absolutely so key for me. My calendar is literally what I live by and if something is not my calendar, then I simply don't do it. And I'm not saying to be completely inflexible, but right now if someone calls me up and also in university, what I wish I had done is 
is that if that given person calls me up, at least there would be a conscious thought process of better than the current offer that I put on my plate already that I've scheduled in. And I truly believe that simply having that thought process would have allowed me to achieve much, much more by being a lot more selective with my time and putting myself first and my priorities before anyone else. Now for the next tip that I have for you guys, I'm actually gonna slightly contradict myself in the last point. What I wish I also did in university was to say yes to more opportunities. Of course, I would still do the same method that I mentioned in terms of blocking out my calendar and choosing things that I wanted to do. Right now as a doctor, I am super busy and my current rule is that I say no to everything that comes my way unless I absolutely 100% say hell yes to the thing that is offered to me. However, when I was in university, especially in the earlier years, my rule was the exact opposite. As long as I had the thought process of do I actually want to be sting, I would say yes to almost every opportunity that presented itself because I wanted to actually find out what I like, what I enjoy and learn more about myself. For example, my second year of medical school, I was actually offered an opportunity to do some research that later took me to Greece and to Taiwan to actually live in those places and do research in those locations. From that experience, I then was able to present my research at conferences across the world. And all of those things not only enhanced my career right now as a doctor, but most importantly, it took me around the world. I met so many cool people in different places. I experienced new culture and I made memories right now that I have forever for the rest of my life. And that all came from saying, you know, what? I've never done research before. Why not? Let's just see where research takes me and it changed my life forever. Particularly in my earlier years of university, there were certain opportunities that were presented to me that I actually turned down because I wanted to carry on doing the things that I always do and hanging out with the same friends. And that was rather than pushing myself and getting used to being in uncomfortable situations. So my advice to you is that in university, honestly, just try your best to say yes to uncomfortable things. Try push yourself outside of your normal comfort zone. Say yes to more opportunities that that you're presented with and just see where it goes. See if you like it. If you end up liking this new thing that you're trying out, fantastic, carry on down that path. But if you actually discover that, you know what, this is not really something I enjoy, then no problem, just drop it and move on to the next opportunity. But at least then you would have learned something about who you are as a person, learned something more about yourself and about the life you want to live in future. And the next and probably the most important tip that I have for you guys is to get your body in the best physical shape that you've ever been in whilst in university. When I was in university for those eight years, I made training an absolute priority. I would work out with no questions asked five to six times a week. And I also had the time to actually meal prep and make sure my diet was on point. However, when I started work as a doctor and I started working 60, 70 hour weeks, night shifts, weekends, many on calls, all of that completely changed. Now, honestly, most times on average, I'm only able to get to the gym three times a week, sometimes only twice, and sometimes I don't go at all during the week. And on top of that, my eating schedule is sometimes all over the place, particularly when I'm on night shifts. And I'm honestly so happy that I made that huge investment of my time in university to get myself in the best possible shape that I could possibly be in. So although right now I don't go to the gym as much as I used to, I started off working as a doctor in a pretty good level. So right now, now, yes, I may have gained a few kilograms. Yes, I don't work out as often. It is much easier to maintain the physique that I had rather than actually trying to put in the work now to gain that given physique. So I encourage you to try your best to get yourself in the healthiest body that you possibly can be so that when life inevitably gets more difficult, you're actually starting from a good place and you give yourself enough room to be flexible with your diet and flexible with working out a little bit less because at the end of the day, you only get one body. And the final tip that I have for you guys is is to go home after 3 a.m. Now, give me a second to explain myself. When I was in university, honestly, there were so many nights where I would find myself at 4 a.m at a random friend's house. You don't really know who this friend is. You don't even know how you got there. You look around the room. Everyone looks like they, they want to go to bed, to be honest with you. And no one's brave enough to actually say, guys, this is boring. Uh, I kind of want to go home. You just sit there until the sun rises or until finally the lights in the club turn on and everyone realizes that it's time to go home. I promise you that if you actually put your hand up and say, guys, it's 3 a.m. I want to go home, I'm tired. Everyone else or most people will leave with you because you're that brave person that actually realizes that, look, it's 3 a.m nothing better will happen after this point in time. And this is such an important thing that I really wish I learned earlier on. Yes, you might have that feeling of FOMO, but honestly, the value that you get after 3 a.m., the value in terms of life enjoyment and having fun, 
that small amount of value is not worth the fatigue that you feel the next day by staying up until 6 a.m. By all means, hang out with your friends, but go home at 3 a.m., get some sleep, get a few hours of sleep, and use that time in the morning rather than lying in bed until midday. Use that morning to do something you enjoy. Go to the gym, you know, play some games, do whatever you want, but I promise you nothing good happens after 3 a.m. And that's all the things that I wish I'd learned at an earlier stage of university. Thank you so much for watching. If this video has been somewhat informative to you in any way or form, please do me a favor, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below to tell me what sort of advice you'd give to yourself and anyone else who's watching this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.